Today we're going to be looking at Hades, independently developed and published by Supergiant Games. Originally released in 2018, Hades is available for the Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, S and X, and of course on Windows and Mac PC. Hades is a single player, fast paced and action packed roguelike played from a three quarter overhead or isometric perspective. Here you'll play as Prince Zagreus, the immortal son of Hades, during his quest to escape from the underworld while facing off against legions of angry lost souls. You wield mythic powers and weapons, and with the aid of Olympus, increase your chances of breaking free from the grips of your father, the god of the dead himself, Hades. If you're playing on PC, you're in luck here, as most modern machines should have no trouble playing this one. Now that we know what type of game this is, let's have a look at some of the main aspects. The game consists of four main areas, or dungeons, each with very distinct artwork and environments. In each of these areas, you'll face off against lost souls through a series of connected rooms, often with the ability to choose your own path as you progress. You'll be able to focus on weapon upgrades, health, and a few other options, or simply just collect darkness or thonic keys to permanently unlock weapons and upgrades for future run-throughs. At the end of each dungeon, you'll need to, of course, defeat a powerful boss before progressing on to the next area. As you've seen so far, Hades is a hack and slash type adventure with the ability to use a small but formidable arsenal of very distinct weaponry. They range from a sword, spear, bow, your fists, and a few other impressive choices. What the game may appear to lack in choices is more than made up for with the variety of attacks each is capable of. You'll have your main attack, your go-to for the most part, it's quick and has a short cooldown. Often there's even a second option available if you hold down the attack button. Next up is a special attack, usually slower, but with some added utility such as ranged damage, area of effect, or increased damage output. You also have the ability to cast or launch ammo towards your foes, dash quickly towards your enemies in attack, and even call in the aid of an Olympian for a devastating attack. Further game mechanics include a whole host of situational bonuses such as backstabbing, critical hits, and so on. To further add to the variety, you can use attacks in combination with each other or even time them to be much more effective. Olympians add even more options as their gifts to you further amp up your damage output and can even alter or provide additional effects such as lightning from Zeus or even water effects from Poseidon. So from six main weapons you get hundreds if not thousands of potential attack combinations, a pretty slick system if you ask me. As in Greek mythology, the Olympians have a wide range of personalities and offer up a corresponding type of assistance in conversation. Between runs there's actually a fair bit to do, and this is where you'll find a variety of characters such as Achilles, Cerberus, Hades, and Nyx. You could chat with each of them and see your relationship evolve from run to run, and the conversation will also reflect how you might have done in the previous run through, your accomplishments, and so on. You can even give them gifts, build up a rapport, trust, and even intimacy if you play your cards right. These same relationships can also result in receiving gifts that bestow upon you new keepsakes which provide extra bonuses and effects. Progression is another important aspect to a roguelite, and Hades is no exception. Between runs you'll be able to spend earned thonic keys and darkness on permanent upgrades from the mirror in your bedroom. Things like increased hit points or damage output, increased ammunition for your cast, and a handful of other niceties. Oh and before I forget, talk to the house contractor about upgrading the house of Hades, and the rest areas during gameplay that provide health and other items to improve your chances of escape. Hades features very colourful and hand-drawn characters and settings. The fantastic artwork combines extremely well with the very nicely animated movements, attacks, effects and destructible environments. I was very surprised with just how good the game looks and plays. Cutscenes aren't a huge part of Hades and mostly consist of lightly animated scenes overlaid with nicely colourized characters and speech. Which I must say has been voiced over extremely well. The writing and actors really breathe a lot of life into the game. Don't worry about me lad. Your father's still getting caught up with work that I created for him in my mortal days. As do the many crisp and detailed sound effects found throughout the game. Another surprising aspect to the game is the fantastic music. It's mostly instrumental, but with some great vocal performances by Ashley Barrett, the whole audio experience really helps to build upon the atmosphere laid out graphically. Building upon the foundation laid out so far, the story is just another feather in the cap of Hades. Of course, much of it is based on Greek mythology, but the depth of characters, relationships, and interactions were extremely well laid out. Somebody has obviously spent a lot of time fleshing out the story here. 
The developers over at Supergiant Games have balanced Hades so that both casual and hardcore gamers, as well as anyone in between, can truly enjoy the game. The controls are simple and easy to use, and the learning curve is low enough to help new players get acclimated while also giving skilled gamers an opportunity to shine. Hell Mode is also available for serious gamers, making the game much more difficult while also providing valuable rewards. Conversely, God Mode is available to more casual gamers that lessens the damage taken after each run, making it easier to progress through the game. The game's fun and easy to play, but if I had to nitpick, my only real complaint here is that the somewhat limited number of rooms available in each area of the game. Still, it's not a huge issue as the game really never felt stale. Despite the game's few shortcomings, and there only being four distinct dungeons to crawl, this game offers a huge amount of replayability. There's a vast array, a seemingly infinite combination of attacks, boons, skills, bonuses, and weaponry available, making each run through the game truly unique. Most players are going to take between 10 and 15 hours of breakthrough and escape the underworld. However, the game isn't over at this point. The story, relationships, and game continue to evolve, drawing you in and making you want to keep playing. To experience the game in its entirety, you're looking at spending near 100 hours, so you're sure to get your money's worth here. I really enjoyed my time with Hades, and really owe thanks to my buddy JG for the recommendation. Thanks, dude. It was fun, through and through, and never felt like it was getting boring, each run offering something new, and I always felt like I was getting more powerful and progressing further, and I think that's the point of a roguelike, and this game really helps to define that. The story, graphics, sound, music, voiceovers, and fantastic gameplay all really come together so well for a fantastic experience for both casual and hardcore gamers alike.